literally going to just float along this fallen tree. Got him. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh god, it's actually like a decent one. Hanging in the customer service, how can I help you? Hey, I was just seeing if you guys are still open for customers coming in. Uh, yes sir, we are open till 7 o'clock and you can come into the store. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. What's up guys? Welcome back to another exciting video. I just had to make a quick call to ensure that Academy was still allowing people to go inside as opposed to just a curbside pickup with what's going around. And with that being said, we're going to hop in here and see if they have a new reel. We've got a lot of new gear coming to the channel very soon. You guys, we just placed a big order from Carl's Bait and Tackle, Tackle Warehouse, and right here, the last stop, I was going to order this reel online, but I decided maybe I could just come down the street and pick it up. Let's get in here and see if they've got what we want in stock. That one, right? This one, yeah, exactly. The Shimano? Yes, and it should have an odd number. Instead of like 100 or 150, it should be like 151 or... Cooper, pleasure yeah. to meet you, bro. You out uh, fishing today? Nice to meet you. Let's stop by and check. I appreciate you, though. Yeah, no problem, man. All you right. Have a good day, okay, man? You too, thank you. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. Okay, bad news, no dice, no left-handers. They just had a bunch of the 150s, so no new reel today, but it's on the way soon. We're gonna grab it from one of these stores around here, I promise. You let us down. But that's okay, check us out, man. We have just found at Shields in the Colony that brand new huge store like Warren Buffett's invested in and just, I think it's the biggest sporting goods store possibly in the country, but for sure in Texas. Like it's got all these other big stores beat out. They have it in stock, apparently left-handed retrieve. I'm gonna go ahead and check it out and do the curbside pickup, which is open only for another hour. We're gonna go grab that thing. Then we're gonna hit the ponds with less than the adequate amount of daylight to have some fun with, but we're gonna show you guys us spooling up this new setup. We're gonna go fishing with Adele. He's also got some new gear that he's gonna be uh, using at the pond tonight, and we're gonna try and hit some new waters that we have never fished before. So uh, join us as we continue this checkout process, purchase this reel, and hit the water. Pretty excited, man. I have uh, not really heard much about this reel, just because I haven't looked, I suppose, but it's like the newer SLX model, I believe. I'll figure out all the differences and we'll cover some, and then make sure to stick around till the end of the video. We're gonna cover our final first impressions and thoughts on this bad boy. Uh, We've got new line in the car. We're ready to go, man. I got an empty rod. Oh yeah, holding the bass on the picture, the side of the building. I like it. Walked up to the door, it was locked, but we uh, found out that it's kind of like curbside pickup at the front. The lady just came out to deliver another guest their goodies and said she's gonna check on our reel for Smith order. I haven't seen a fishing one come through yet. Okay. So it might uh, be a few more minutes, but yeah. I haven't seen it come yet. No worries. Shimano reel. Okay. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Awesome, there appreciate you it. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. <laughs> oh, all right. In a shocking turn of events, Devin is opening up the new left-handed reel that she doesn't even care for. <laughs> she likes right-handed. And I'm not getting left-handed for any specific reason except for the fact that I only really have one. And I kind of enjoy uh, fishing left-handed. That way I have a little bit of... Sometimes I like working different baits with my right hand on the rod. And other times I like it with the left hand. Uh, think about summertime coming up, think about buzz baits. I'll cast, and as soon as that thing hits the water, you wanna be reeling. So currently we have the SLX DC, but this is a standard magnetic braking, if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna get this thing dialed in, showcase how you should uh, get your stuff ready to fish if it's brand new. Ooh, it feels good, and I like the shinier paint than the traditional SLX being a flatter finish. This is still like a satin. It's just got a little extra shimmer and shine, almost like a, a higher dollar look and I really like the standout blue tension knob on the SLX DC a portion of its blue but not this bottom piece that is sick all right we got to go meet Adele at the ponds we got to put this thing to use I didn't know if it was going to be the higher or lower gear ratio because they only had one option on their store to buy which was left-handed or right-handed and it didn't showcase the HG or standard and we got the HG so this is like kind of typical of most of our reels this is a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio Fantastic, man. Let's go ahead and get this thing out on the water. Bye, Shills. That is a huge store out here in Grand Scape in the Colony, Texas. I think there's a Ferris wheel in it. They, yeah, Devin says she thinks there's a Ferris wheel in that place. I wouldn't even doubt it. It's <laughs> huge. The grand opening is during this pandemic. pandemic. And so all they're doing is curbside pickup orders. Well, they got my reel, so I'm happy, camper. <laughs> Thank you, Shields. <laughs> <laughs> Number <Personal> one spot. <laughs> Whoa, look at this spot, dude. We have never hit this. It looks amazing. Uh, let's get this thing set up real quick. We're gonna open up this Skook and Squad yeah, Fluorocarbon. 
17 pound. If you guys had just one setup and you wanted to know a good all around line, I would say 15 pound floral carbon. Uh, this is 17, just a little extra strength. Fighting through some heavy cover out here in Texas, y'all might have less structure in your ponds. Might be up north, might be in a place where they're line shy. 15 is just great all around. 12 pounds good for cranks, 20 pounds good for heavy cover. Go somewhere right in the middle and you'll be doing good. So here's what you're gonna wanna do when you spool up a new reel. You're going to want to first feed the line through your rod. Make sure your line does not get twisted around the rod when you do this. We have had that happen before and it doesn't uh, equal a good situation. You end up wasting a lot of time. Probably should have put this reel on beforehand. Now I gotta hold the line while I do it. Just crank this thing down. Make sure you really tighten this good because I have had a reel pop off the rod a few times in the past. Mainly cheaper rods. These reel seats are real good on the higher end stuff but just a, a thing to mention. So we're gonna feed this through the guide here, that eye of the reel, very important. Otherwise, as you're cranking in your reel, the line's just gonna be all on one side of the spool. It won't get divvied across because you missed going through that eye as the first step. Once you get that line around here, we're gonna just tie a little knot. Standard little guy, boom. Once I get that one knot nice and tight, I just go over it with another, crank that down. Now we're just gonna cut this tag end, this excess. And now we can start cranking the reel and getting this line on here. One thing to mention is the drag is normally loose when you get your new reel, so you crank it down. Now you'd be going clockwise if it was a right-handed reel, but to tighten the drag on a left-hander, you go counterclockwise. Essentially, it's always gonna be going forwards uh, will be how you tighten that drag. Otherwise, you'll be cranking and your line won't even go on the spool because the drag is so loose, it's not really doing anything. Now we can start uh, getting that line on there and you wanna keep the line tight as you crank, meaning you wanna have some resistance here that that line's going through, that way it goes on the spool nice and tight. If I were to just have it loose and start cranking, it goes on very loose. Keep that tight within my fingers though. Now it goes on the spool nice and tight. Next pointer is to grab a screwdriver and have somebody hold it in the vertical position while you reel. This way the line doesn't twist around as much. If you just have it flopping around on the ground, it will twist a little bit and then you'll get more backlashes. We've just got it spooled up. Uh, this one's easy to see, that blue color. You don't wanna go any past that. In fact, you wanna leave a little bit of room if you can. That way you're not overloading the spool with too much line. We've got plenty of line left on the spool. Could potentially get another whole reel taken care of depending on the spool size. Or you can utilize this line uh, tying leaders if let's say you're doing like a floral carbon to a braid leader. Plenty of extra line on this spool. You guys can get the line for 15% off. I'll link it down in the description. All Guggen Squad related gear. So. Let's just cut that right there and get our uh, lure tied on and talk a little bit about this reel, dialing it in for the first few casts as we try and catch some fish out here on the golf course. I'm going straight for one of my recent confidence baits, you guys. Grass Hero Swim Jig in Rotten Pumpkin color with a saucy swimmer on the back. Just trying to kind of mimic a bluegill. We're gonna put this uh, trailer right on that swim jig and get to throwing. Looks so good. And we've got a bait that matches and aesthetics. Just ready to rock and roll. So new line, we're gonna have to get this casted out a couple times. You might get more backlashes right off the start. It's important to make sure that your brakes are set to high when you're first getting used to a reel. And then of course you can dial it back and adjust it in later. Let's check this tension knob. The bait is dropping very fast, so we wanna tighten that up. So that I believe to tighten is still clockwise, even though it's a left-handed reel. Yeah, we're tightening it. There we go, now the bait's not dropping at all. We're gonna loosen it until the bait drops slowly. There's a little bit of wind tonight. We could be casting into it. So we want to get it to where that bait drops slowly like that, a little bit even slower maybe as I'm just getting used to this reel and that's gonna help you prevent bird's nest and backlashes as you're getting used to new equipment. Or if you just tie on new lures, lighter stuff, heavier stuff, you don't really know what to do, where to leave your tension, it's always a good idea to see where the bait drops slowly to get things started, just to start things off. This is the brake deal right here and I don't know why, but it's like very hard to push I'm trying to get it to like twist so I can show you guys you want to have your brakes kind of like almost on max at first and then back off a little bit but this thing is like dude something is out of whack I mean I'll just have to thumb it more obviously I'm missing something because that's not supposed to be hard to turn Oh, see there we go first bird's nest because those brakes are so loose so I'm just gonna have to be gentle with my casts and really uh 
thumb this spool. It's always best when it gets uh, really clogged up and you like can't pull anymore to start working the line around what is messed up on your spool as opposed to just keep pulling and tightening that knot. So just a little bird's nest tip. You don't want to leave any loose line because that's going to affect your future cast. So now you want to make sure you tighten that spool and you kind of switch hands like I'm doing here. Hold that tight as you reel that line back on because you want it to go back on that spool nice and tight. Otherwise, like I say, it's going to make your next few casts even the same result there. Now, my main goal is to try and cast along the banks parallel with them, you guys, because a lot of these bass this time of year, at least in Texas, are up shallow and have either they're either pre-spawn or post-spawn, but they're usually on the banks, either guarding their beds on beds or um, guarding their fry. So casting shallow is the name of the game in our area. And that is why I'm just going to keep on walking this bank with this grass hero. Oh, got him. oh shit! Right at the bank, dude, on a bed, I think. Uh, two pounds. Dang it! What a cool spot. I see one just below us. There's two. Here we go. He might eat it. Okay, they scurried off. All right, guys, we got the new gear, but we also want to get some fish. So we're making a move right down the street. By the way, I didn't really say hi to Adele on camera, and Adele is here with us. Up, About buddy? to rip some lips at this next bot. Okay. I think all of us pretty much got bites here, just uh, not connecting, so. Check out Adele's new hardware. Just picked it up today, right? Yes, sir. All right, tell me what it is. I don't even. It is a Luz MSB Speed Spool um, Tournament MP. Black and red yeah, bros. It just came out like three months ago, I think. And, no uh, way. My friend Jordan put me on it and tried his out, loved it. So I decided to get one. And then this guy right here was on sale from 80 bucks to 50 bucks online. No and way. And coincidentally, it matched. So yeah, that's picked perfect. It up. It's a 7.2 medium heavy fast action. 7.2 medium heavy, guys. That is exactly what you want for all around use. If you only had like one casting setup, I've heard it so many times. 7 foot 2 medium heavy, awesome rod. Dude, heck yeah. New gear all around. This drain was pumping out water last time and I was literally just like smashing them right here. But oh, we have one. We had one that whole time. I thought I saw the line moving. <laughs> first catch on the new reel i'm like is the line moving and then i started popping it and it had more resistance wow that's funny so we actually did have one well uh i'm gonna stick it out here for just a second then first catch on the new reel man i'm pumped but that wasn't the size we're after so let's let's give that another little send here let's see if anything chases up the glide bait <laughs> oh, got him? <laughs> oh, I saw him grab it. Oh, I actually snagged him. <laughs> My little baby dink of a fish. That was cool. There was a pair of them, two little guys. And I uh, saw him come up and pick up the jig, messing with it. Look, his tail's even. He got a little munch, huh? Whatever. God, this creek is super clear. I don't know if you guys can see. Go ahead and let this little little tight go. One last look. Little chub. He's eating good. All right, bud. Thank you. Thank you for not letting me get skunked. <laughs> he's off to nowhere fast. Like he's just literally cruising right there, right where I caught him. Too funny. Gotcha. Oh no, he had it. <laughs> Well, we tried the back pocket, but what appears to be beds here. Yeah, we're gonna cast right along this. This is a big old tree that just extends way out. This could hold some bass. I'm literally gonna just float along this fallen tree. Got him. That's a big one. 
that's a big one. Oh God, it's actually like a decent one. Oh no, oh no, it's like halfway decent, guys. Oh God, oh gosh, oh, oh, what a catch, guys. Probably a three pounder on the swim jig right there. <laughs> oh God. Um, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, good, good call. All right, y'all, that is how you break in a new reel right there. Plump little guy. I would say closing in on three pounds, though, because quite hefty with the weight. Look at that grass hero swim jig just right in the top of the mouth. This fish has been caught before, and uh, it's no wonder why, because I think this is probably its, its home for the uh, spawn season, potentially. There's a spot that looks like people have come down and fish, and literally there's a downed tree that just runs out, I mean, 30, 40, 50 feet here and uh, I was just bringing it right along that tree and uh, sure enough, close to the bank as a lot of these fish are during the spawn, we uh, managed to pull this one out. I was literally expecting a fish to come out and bite it right at that exact moment too because it was kind of shallow and then there was a little deep pocket right there close to the bank. Got this puppy, let's get him back in the water but super pumped on a uh, big catch first day with the new SLX XT reel man. That's what I'm saying guys. Remember I mentioned that 17 pound fluorocarbon in Texas man you never know what you're gonna be up against trees. I mean this is anywhere. I'm just saying I prefer heavier line over uh, lighter line in most cases. I can deal with the fact that the fish can see the line oftentimes unless it's in waters where they are notably line shy and you just have to downsize. I prefer to just have that reassurance of the higher rated line. Gotcha. No, I don't. What the f How do they keep swiping at it? And I miss them. <clears throat> that was like a one pounder. They're all right on the bank. You could have had dinner, dude. You know it's hot. <laughs> we don't have a lot of light left. Okay. Just to hit another spot. Yep. Spot Knock it off the list and see what's over. Yep. It was smaller for sure. Yeah, Smallest one. I don't think there's much of anything in here. Over here, it's just crystal clear. There's like no bait fish or anything. I think we should just try that first one again. There's only one small bass logged out of here and then one bluegill. <laughs> it's going down. All right, guys, light is fading. Nothing was really at that last pond. So we're back at the first spot we stopped at, just hitting the other side of the bridge just before it gets pitch black out here. See if we can't link up with another one or two on the new equipment. Don't forget, we'll take you back home and give you our final thoughts here as we wrap this up. Go on, go on. All right. Nice. All right, first caught fish out of this area. Just a little guy though. We're gonna get him right back in there because we got bigger fish to fry. Bigger fish to fry. Got to be fish stocked up over here where this uh, water is flowing in. This could be a good evening bite right here. Oh yeah, we have got to get in on this. Only problem is it's just very shallow. I don't know if there's anything under here. I know there's fish in here though. This is grass hero material too. Here's what looks like a bed right here. I know light's fading. Probably won't be good for the GoPro much longer. All right, it's too dark. Y'all can't see nothing. I'll catch up with you guys at the house and we'll talk about this reel. All right, guys, back at the house. That sums everything up. So I was just playing with that brake adjustment a little bit more and it's definitely pretty stiff. I don't know if that's usual on the SLX XTs or if I got an unusually tight one, but either way, uh, I've got the brake styled into where I want it now and I can move that dial. It's not as bad as it was just getting it that initial twist. So brakes are good. 
And uh, if you compare that to something like our SLX DC, really the only difference is the finish. Uh, the gear ratio is a little different and then also the, the braking system. Of course, the DC has that wine that we all love and so just a little bit more pricey uh, when you want to step into that DC braking system that's gonna help you out and assist in high winds and things of that nature. But uh, scoop you up something like a regular SLX for 99 bucks. You know, if you're looking to get a nice bait caster, definitely step into Shimano. Can't say enough good things about them. We've used a lot of cheaper reels uh, when we first started and gradually started buying Shimano's and I'm telling you what, you can rely on these things where others have break, broken, you know, handles have come off, uh, the gears have gotten messed up to where it's just clanky and just, I'm telling you what, low maintenance, high quality and durability is what Shimano has uh, provided us. So last thing I'm going to talk about is the gear ratio. We got the HG on the SLX XT which is 7.2 to 1, and then we have the uh, XG, the extra high gear, essentially 8.2 to 1 on the SLX DC. All that means is that the SLX DC with that higher gear ratio is going to bring in a little bit more line for a full turn of the handle. Sometimes a high gear is necessary for certain techniques. I would just say go with the HG that's going to be the all-around great uh, standardized 7.2 to 1 ratio that I think works well for most anything. And then there's also that lower gear ratio. You just choose what's best for you. The 150 is going to be the spool size. So Shimano offers everything from probably I'd say 100 to like, you know, 250, 300, 400 on some gigantic reels with a lot more line capacity. But 150 is fantastic, uh, more than enough to get the job done. You will love this reel if you pick it up for 140 is what we paid after tax. And we'll just leave it at that, man. Awesome new reel. Uh, loving it. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Till then, y'all. Probably tomorrow. We've been going one a day during the quarantine. See you. <gasps>